Welcome Clarity Coders. Today's video is a little more interactive than usual. I'm going to show you how you can get started in the extremely popular Kaggle data science competitions. We're going to do that using the rock, paper, scissors competition. Now I'm going to show you four things in this video. The first thing is how you can sign up for Kaggle. The second is how to pick your contest, in our case rock, paper, scissors. The third is how you actually submit a finalized agent to get yourself on the leaderboard and start competing against other teams. And finally, I'm going to show you how you can get a spot on our team that is currently positioned somewhere in between 50 and 100th in the rock, paper, scissors competition out of 600 something teams right now. So make sure you stick around till the end to see that. Let's not waste any more time and jump right in. So the first thing we're going to do is head over to the Kaggle site and from here you can click the register button. It might look a little different than this depending on if there's an update, but you should be able to find it around there somewhere. You'll have different options to register. I'm going to use a Google account. You can use whatever type of account you want and then you'll go through the sign in process. Now once you complete your sign up process, you should come back to a page that looks like this. And on the left hand side, you'll see an option that says compete. This is where we're going to find our list of competition. Now the one that I'm going to share with you today to get started is the rock, paper, scissors competition. Now this competition is for no money. It's just for some swag and some Kaggle gear, that sort of thing. And we're going to go ahead and join this competition. Now in order to join this competition, you're going to have to accept some rules and you might have to verify your account. And once you do that, I'm going to show you how to create and submit your first agent to test against the other players. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this on Jupyter Notebooks. If you don't have Jupyter Notebooks, it's very easy to get set up. You can go to this address and install Anaconda. And part of Anaconda is the Jupyter Notebooks. So I'm going to actually open that up on my computer. So once you get it installed, you can continue the video from here. You can see I have an Anaconda Navigator. That will take you to a list of all the Anaconda apps, including Jupyter Notebooks. I'm going to just quick start Jupyter Notebook here. You'll probably see a pop-up similar to this. And then hopefully a notebook of sort pops up. This is my desktop. As you can see, we got a lot of stuff going on there. What I'm going to do for this video, I'm just going to create a new folder on my desktop. I'll call it RPS underscore tutorial. So from there, we should be able to find that in our directory here. So we're going to make sure we're on our desktop because I saved that folder on my desktop or go wherever you saved your folder. And then from here, you can see our RPS tutorial folder with nothing inside of it. Perfect. So let's go ahead and start creating our first agent. So what we want to do is we want to create a new Python 3 notebook. The first thing we need to do is pip install Kaggle environments. So I'm going to do pip install. Now, if you never worked with Jupyter Notebooks, it's a little different. I'm not a huge fan of Jupyter Notebooks, but this has some nice features in it for watching our agent, so we'll stick with that. To run it, you can use the short key of holding shift and pushing enter, and you'll see I get a little asterisk there as it runs that code block. If you get a message such as this, double check your spelling. You might have some spelling issues like myself here. <laughs> We're gonna try that again, shift enter. You can see that I already had these installed, so that worked fine. Now we can actually start creating our agents. The first one I'm going to create is very simple. It's called Nash Equilibrium, and all it means is a completely random agent. So in terms of rock, paper, scissors, remember our agent is going to return either zero for rock, one for paper, and two for scissors. So our agent is going to take in two parameters. So we're going to define our random agent. We're going to take in an observation and the configuration. I'll explain those in a little bit, but this agent isn't gonna use those at all, right? It doesn't care what's happening in its environment. It's just gonna give us a random choice between rock, paper, scissors. So we're going to return our random dot rand int between zero and two. Believe it or not, folks, that's it. We've created our first random agent that we can actually submit. We're gonna make one addition here to actually write this file. So we're going to do 2% symbols, we're going to say write file, and then you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to say random underscore agent dot pi. Now, if I shift enter, nothing's going to happen, obviously, because we're not calling this function, but this is a valid function in the tournament itself. And if we look at 
our folder now, you can see we've created a random agent.py. Remember, it has to take two parameters and it has to return a single integer between zero and two, whatever your agent does. Now it can be doing crazy complex things or just spitting back a random number, but it has to meet those qualifications. Now you could go ahead and submit that agent, but we're gonna take it a step farther. I'm gonna show you one more here. So for this agent, we're gonna do something a little different. We are gonna use the observations from the past. So what I wanna do here is I wanna create an agent that copies whatever the opponent did last. Now that we have our function defined, we can start building the logic behind our agent. Now one thing we wanna do is if we're gonna copy our agent on the first move, we have nothing to copy, right? The first time I play rock, paper, scissors against you, you haven't made a move yet, so it's hard to copy what you did last time. So we have to make sure we're past the first observation step. So what I'm gonna say is OBS dot step is greater than zero. So we're only gonna do this if the observation step is greater than zero. So the observation that the Kaggle environment's passing in has a parameter called step, which counts up from zero to however many steps are in the match itself. So we're gonna make sure we're not on the first step. And if we're not on the first step, we can simply return, and we're gonna look on our observation again, and we're gonna see what the last opponent action was and we're going to return whatever they did otherwise so this is on the first turn we'll do random dot rand int zero to two so on the very first turn we're going to return a random number between zero and two other than that we're always going to copy the opponent's previous play let's also make that a pi file so we can submit that agent if we would like we'll submit whichever agent does better out of the two so let's do two percent signs, write file. We'll call this copy agent.py. And that looks like it was successful as well. Now, once we do this, we can actually test out our agents. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do from Kaggle environments, import make. You'll get that weird error, just ignore that. That shows up everywhere. And now we're gonna run our tests between our random agent and our copy agent. So we're gonna create an environment. We're gonna use make. We're gonna define what game we're playing here. We're doing rock, paper, scissors. And our configuration, you'll notice that is the config variable we're passing in here. We don't use it in our agents, but you could. And we're gonna pass in a dictionary with the number of episode steps. Cool, that looks pretty good. We should have an environment now. Now we're gonna run our environment. So we're gonna say environment.run. Now we're gonna choose our first agent. So our first agent is going to be random underscore agent dot pi. You wanna make sure you actually did the right file command so these exist or else it won't find your agent. And we need an opponent. So we're gonna say copy underscore agent dot pi. Now we can actually watch our agent. So we can say environment dot render. We'll say our mode equals ipython. We'll do 800 by 800. And then we'll run this cell. So I'm holding shift and hitting enter again. We'll fix our small error here. It's a dictionary, so it's not an equal sign. It is a colon. And we'll put some quotes around episode steps because it's a key, it's not a variable. It's still early here, guys. And we'll try and run this again. We're gonna make one addition to these. We forgot to import random. We wanna use the random number generator in both of these files. So we're gonna rerun this and we're gonna do the same on the one below. And we'll rerun this one as well. And now you can see our two agents are playing rock, paper, scissors. We can speed through this and it looks like our copy agent actually won, which is a little surprising. Awesome, so now you have two agents created. We can go ahead and submit one of these agents to the competition and see how it does. So we're back on the Kaggle site and you can see here that we have a submit agent tab and then also a my submissions tab. If you look at my submissions, you can see all your submissions and how they're doing on the leaderboard. We're going to submit an agent. It's pretty simple from this point. You can simply pick this 
upload and pick whatever agent you want. So you're gonna navigate back to where we define those agents on your desktop. And then you can briefly describe your submission as well. Now, Clarity Coders, jump into the Discord. Once you get this completed, you have to have a submitted agent first. I'm going to take four people and add them to my team so we can compete together. This is our current position as of today. It'll obviously change as a dynamic leaderboard. These can help you rank up your Kaggle account and get some props on the site in general. So I wanna get a team together that can compete and do well in this competition. One thing that I wanna note is I'm not just going to add the four best people to the team. I would like to get a range of experience levels. So feel free to get it submitted, hop over to the Discord, jump into this channel, tell me that you submitted it, and if you're one of the first four, we will get you added to the team. If you're not, stay around with us and we'll be doing future competitions together. And until next time, keep coding.